so I worked on a bunch of particle physics, cosmology. I um, uh, uh, it was a fairly small group of people doing theoretical particle physics there, and um, uh, you know Dick Feynman, Murray Gell-Mann were two of the sort of star people, uh, I, both of whom I knew reasonably well. And um, I think very, it was kind of a strange situation because there were two kind of sort of top physicists and um, they had sort of offices pretty much next to each other and they kind of couldn't stand each other and had been in, the, you know, locked in the same place for decades, so to speak. And they would always, you know, say things to me that were kind of sniping at the other one. And it was kind of, kind of funny. But um, uh, what was your relationship with both of them? Um, well, I, I knew them both reasonably well. I mean, Murray Gelman, uh, he was always, I would say, he didn't engage as much in kind of the, the at least with me, in talking about kind of the, the, the kind of the, the, in the trenches about physics. It was more all sorts of stuff about more or less the kind of, uh, I would say more the, the social structure of the field, so to speak, and more, I mean, he was very, uh, I remember when I was first working on uh, this thing called SMP, my first big computer system, and um, Murray was kind of like, oh, you know, he'd like to try it out and things, but I think he didn't, he never wanted me to know that he didn't know how to type. And so this led to, it just, most people didn't know how to type in those days. and. Um, It, it was, um, and so there was a kind of a, a lot of lot of strange things like that. I would say with, with Dick Feynman, I, I had a much more direct, you know, talking about physics and foundations of physics and so on. And, um, uh, you know. How, he, how often did you meet on a weekly basis? I mean, I would see them. Dick Feynman, I'm sure I, I would have several conversations per week. Um, For three years? Uh, yeah, maybe three years. And then... Then we were both consultants at this company called Thinking Machines Corporation. So mm -hmm. I would see him there from, you know, episodically. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it's funny because it would be kind of a mixture of, um, I talk a bunch about physics and um, he would always be, and, and I was doing, uh, eventually doing a bunch of stuff with computers and he would have all kinds of opinions about what I should do and he would, you know, have all kinds of things about how, oh, this Feynman diagram method, which he invented, which he was sort of famous for, said, it's a really stupid way of doing this. There's got to be a better way of doing it. But I can't figure out what it is. And, and um, it was, it's really a shame that, that he died many years ago now. But, but um, you know, now with our physics project, I think I understand quantum mechanics fairly well. And one of the conversations I would have with him repeatedly was like, he would always make the statement, nobody really understands quantum mechanics, even though he'd spent much of his life working on it. And uh, he talked a whole lot about, about quantum mechanics, the foundations of quantum mechanics, worked with him actually on, on sort of what might a quantum computer be like. And um, it was sort of a, I mean, I would say that um, he was a very competitive fellow in many ways. He would always say, I mean, he was, I mean, I first knew him when I was 18 and he was 60. Um, and uh, he would always say, oh, you're so quick and, you know, I, but I'm three times your age. I used to be, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, you know, we tried to work on quantum computers together. It was sort of a funny thing because he was really good at doing calculations by hand and getting the right answer. Uh -huh. I could never do that. Um, and, you know, in the end, the fact that he could get the right answer was a consequence, I think, not only of calculational prowess, but also a certain intuition that guided what was going on. Although he never thought that that calculation part was something difficult. So he would always kind of develop the intuition at the end based on the answer, throw away all the calculation, tell people about the intuition part, and people would say, how did you figure that out? And he would never tell people. I mean, I knew so many times, I knew there was just tons and tons of detailed calculation. And, um, you know, which he just, he kind of, it's sort of a thing one does. I've certainly done this myself. You know, you discount the things that you're good at on the grounds that everybody can do that. And then you really focus in on the things that are more challenging for you to do. It's sort of like Ramanujan, like coming up with all this uh, kind of formulas, which are like, how did you actually do that? But then there's a, what's behind the scenes, 
ton of, ton of pages and pages of all the math he did. Yes, yes. Before yes. he would say minus one over twelve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. No, I think I think. Um, uh, I mean, the thing that was sort of interesting with with Dick Feynman was that more so. I mean, Ramanujan never explained the intuition that he had internally mm -hmm. that led to all these weird formulas. In physics, maybe it's an easier task to explain that intuition, and that would be what Feynman sort of concentrated on explaining that intuition. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we tried to work together on the whole quantum computers question, it was it was sort of I did a bunch of computer calculations. Actually, I found some of the calculations that I did just very recently. I I found some of these things, and um, uh, you know, and he would do these hand calculations, and I would come up with some answer, and he would come up with some answer, and he would say, "I don't understand your answer," and I would say, "I don't understand your answer." But um, I mean, you know, and, and I think the main conclusion, which is sort of interesting, is that that um, uh, you know, it's like we concluded, it's just not going to work. It's the the effort of doing the measurement in quantum mechanics is likely to be more difficult than what you gain from sort of the quantum part of things. And it's sort of ironic in a sense that that seems to be at least what my current uh, uh, sort of findings are. And uh, that was a very, very early sort of precursor of, of those things back in, back in those days. But I, I would say that, um, uh, you know, Feynman, well, but both Murray and, and Murray Gilman and Dick Feynman would give me all kinds of advice um, and it's always dangerous giving people advice because, you know, there's, there's always a large component of, of uh, sort of the, the life story of the advisor wraps up tremendously with the advice. And it's, it's always something I always have to remember that whenever I'm kind of giving people advice, it's, it's for them, not my story. They're different from me. And, um, uh, uh, and so, you know, they would both, I mean, Murray was always like, why are you working on these kinds of things about computers? And, you know, that's, uh, you know, why aren't you doing stuff that's just pure physics? And um, uh, Feynman was always, um, uh, you know, why are you doing organizational kinds of things? You should just do science and not do organizational stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, reflections of, of uh, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, it was, it was intended as good advice, so to speak. But it was in the end, I think, more a reflection of, of their life stories. Yeah, the, 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 there's a famous letter he wrote to you in 1985. Can, can, can you tell us more about the advice he gave in that letter? Well, Apart I think, from the yeah, I think, of, I think he, yeah. I don't remember all the details, but it was kind of like, I was, that was a time when I was interested in setting up kind of research institute around complex systems and so on. And he's like, why do you want to do this? You should just, uh, you know, just, you just want to do the science, let somebody else do the organization. And, you know, he's like, and he's a, has a, some whole, thing about, you know, you, you don't, you shouldn't be dealing with ordinary people in quotes, they will just drive you crazy. Um, it's, it's very interesting that he would say that because in actuality, Feynman had a very diverse group of people he found interesting. And um, including very, I just wrote an obituary actually for one of the people that I knew pretty well, and he knew well, called Ed Fredkin, who is kind of a, a, a an unusual and somewhat kooky character. And um, you know, this was, that was the type of person that Feynman liked to hang out with. Rather, he couldn't stand the academic crowd. You know, he just was, um, and he would just make fun of them. I mean, he, he would, uh, at least to me, he was, would routinely kind of imitate, you know, sort of silly things they would say. What was his main criticism? That they weren't really getting to the point of things, that they were very much following a, a path and that they were sort of getting very technical and using all kinds of fancy jargon and so on, and that that was sort of, uh, uh, they were hiding behind that to not really have anything serious to say. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I, I would say that the, um, it was interesting that, that Dick Feynman was very much of a build everything from first principles. He was, he was interested in tools, like he was interested in computers. He never got deeply into computers, but he was interested in them. And, uh, but when you looked at kind of the mathematical tooling that he used, he never used 20th century mathematics. The mathematics that he used was basically 19th century. And in retrospect, I think some of the things he did would have gotten further. I mean, it always amused him. You know, one of his great inventions was the path integral, which is kind of the, the, uh, the way that one sort of in, uh, thinks about quantum field theory, sort of a core idea in, in, uh, in the quantum uh, way of thinking about the world. 
And the path integral is mathematically a mess. Still nobody understands, you know, I's dotted, T's crossed, what the path integral really is mathematically. And, you know, he would always sort of say, oh, so-and-so is talking about this, and it doesn't make any difference. It's all a waste of time. It's all just, you know, angels on heads of pins type thing. One can calculate things this way uh, using these methods.